with me, your instructor for today. And today we're going to be dealing with the Robin Air uh, evacuation and recycling machine for air conditioning service. It is model number 34788NI. And I'm going to show you how to use this machine. I have my test mule here. This is our uh, Kia Sorento that we're using. It's a car owned by the shop. And I'm going to teach you how to discharge this system, how to write, recycle the refrigerant, add oil, check the oil that came out of the system, vacuum, and charge the system with the correct amount of refrigerant. So stick around. Okay, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and power the machine on. The on button is right here. And it'll go through a warm up where it'll check all the sensors and do a self diagnostic check. And we also, whenever we're starting a refrigerant service, a diagnostic, a performance check, anything like that, we want to make sure that the machine that we're using doesn't have any refrigerant in it. So this is all set to zero. Matter of fact, this, this whole machine's under vacuum. So that means that when we're hooking this machine up to the car, we're not injecting just even a small amount of refrigerant into the vehicle. So if you do have refrigerant left in from you know a previous technician that had used it, you want to go ahead and do a recover on the machine itself. Just leave the machine unhooked from a car and do a recover to pull the refrigerant out of the hoses. So now we are finished with our warm up and our check. I'm going to zoom in here to this right here. So this is what I want y'all to see right here. The charge capacity is going to be 3.4 and some change pounds with recover capacity at 17 point something. Okay, so it's kind of moving around a little bit. So that means I can charge up to almost three and a half pounds. I can recover up to 17. That means that, you know, you need to check and make sure that you have enough refrigerant and enough capacity for whatever vehicle that you're working on. Okay, let's get this thing hooked up. Okay, so hooking this up is the same as hooking any, any other air conditioning machine up. You have your uh, quick disconnects. You wanna make sure that they're loosened before you put them on there. You will find the high side and go ahead and twist it down to see the gauge move. And our low side is going to be the same. Okay, so we have that done. Now on to the next step. Okay, now what we are going to do is just check our gauges, make sure that we do have pressure. The machine will do this itself as well. But now we're going to do a recover. Say we're doing, we're just measuring the, the refrigerant that's in this vehicle. And so we're going to do a recover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the recover button right here. It's going to ask me to enter a service record. I'm not going to do that. I normally don't. You may work in a shop that requires you to have a service record. So I'm just going to press the check on do not save service record. Connect both service hoses to AC system being serviced and open both coupler valves, which we've already done in the previous step. I'm just going to press the green button again. All right, so the machine is going to check the inlet pressure. What this is doing is, is making sure that you have something to recover. So it's saying connect refrigerant identifier to USB port and then turn on identifier or skip. We don't have an identifier on this model. You may on yours and just follow the instructions there. And I always recommend to identify your refrigerant before you recover it so you're not cross contaminating your stuff. But uh, I know that this is just 134A in this vehicle. I'm very familiar with this vehicle. So I'm just going to skip that. And it's going to do a low side clear, okay? So it's pulling out from the low side. Now I have found if you're used to some of uh, Robin Air's older machines, this machine does work a little bit slower in uh, almost every way. But however, I think it's, it's mostly just because it's so thorough. So uh, while this draws down, I'm going to uh, stop the tape and then I'll pick back up when we're done as you see here, we're reading the tank weight. Whenever you're doing a pull down or a recharge, you don't want to touch the machine. So it's starting to recover here. You'll start to see the pounds go up.
we are almost done with our recovery. I've got 0.7 pounds in it or so, which is close to the capacity of this vehicle. So I'm just gonna let this play out. And once the vehicle has recovered all the refrigerant, it's gonna go into what we call a second stage recovery where it will apply a light vacuum on it. So you will hear this kick over and I think it's about a five or six minute vacuum that it will put on the system to make sure that it gets all the oil, everything out of the system. Also, one thing you need to do before you start pulling this stuff down and before it goes into vacuum is check your oil bobber that is underneath where we're at here. Let me see if I can scroll down here. There's an oil bottle right there and we need to empty it out or at least mark where the oil level is. That way we can replace the oil when we go to charge the uh, car back up. So you probably just heard the vacuum pump come on and we're going into a second stage recover and process so showing about five minutes left. So I'm gonna turn this off until we get to the end of that. Okay, we're almost done with second stage. Just counting down to the last seconds here, but uh, you can see the gauges. The gauges are in vacuum. So you can use this as a you know, a leak test of sorts, even though we'll be doing a leak test here in a minute when we do our full vacuum. So when it cuts off, the oil drain is going to happen. So any oil that's trapped in the refrigerant will get drained into that uh, lower container, the white container underneath there. And you just need to document that and make sure that you put the correct amount of oil in when you're charging your vehicle. Just a few more seconds. Any day now. So it's going to read the tank weight again and it's going to tell you how much you got out. So we got out um, a little over a pound and we are told to check the drain bottle of course and make sure that we have the correct amount of oil going back in the system okay so that's it on recovery now let's talk about I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and we're gonna press this green button and now we're gonna have to evacuate the system or vacuum it down and so we're gonna press the vacuum button and it's gonna check and make sure you don't have any pressure on the machine. The reason why is if we're, of course, if we pull a vacuum on a, on a fully pressurized system, we can damage something. So it's gonna ask you to enter your service data again. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip this. So vacuum time, uh, you know, minimum time on anything like this is gonna be 10 minutes. I'm not really worried about this vehicle because uh, I've done this a couple of times on this vehicle teaching students. So I'm just gonna pull this down to uh, 30 seconds. And then it's going to ask you vacuum leak test. Okay, so what the machine will do when the vacuum leak test is happening is it will not put a vacuum on it, but not let any pressure off the system. And if the pressure goes up or the vacuum goes down, I guess we better to say, then obviously we have a leak. We have air getting into the system through a leak, through a hose or whatever. And so it will fail the leak test. Now the leak test on this system is not foolproof. Uh, I have seen vehicles with leaks that pass on this machine. Also, the leak test is only going to tell you it's leaking. It's not going to tell you where it's leaking. So we're going to have to get our uh, dye and our fluorescent light and our glasses and track down the leak. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you press down and it has the I or the O for vacuum leak test. I'm going to press that on. And after that, the vacuum is going to uh, go for the 30 seconds that I have and of course, you know 10 20 30 minutes or so of vacuum time is really what you need if You have a system open overnight. I normally do 20 30 minutes. So uh, You'll see the gauges creep down of course uh, if they're not already down and um, When this finishes up, it'll go directly to a leak test and you're going to hear that vacuum pump click off and allow the system just to rest and so the leak test will go in progress now. Let me zoom in here so you can see. So it's going to go for, you know, five minutes or so. 
and I'm just going to cut to the end. Okay, so we're back. Uh, the machine is about winding down on this vacuum leak test, and again, it's just monitoring the pressure in the system to see if it changes. If the pressure goes up or the vacuum goes down, then obviously we have a leak. So it's going to come up here and it's going to tell me my vacuum is complete and my leak test is completed and leak test passed. Uh, that means that we don't necessarily don't have a leak, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have a huge leak. So uh, I don't really use this machine for leak testing. If I have a, a low refrigerant or something like that, I'm going to add my dye and use my glasses and my light to find out or you know, nitrogen or a sniffer, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you, the, the normal method you use to find leaks. Okay, so now we're going to charge the vehicle up. So the first thing we're going to do is, let me zoom out here, is we are going to take this oil container off here. And we're going to measure the oil that came out of it. So it looks like we're about three ounces of oil right here, excuse me, three ounces of oil. So we would put three ounces of oil back in here if we needed. And you have an oil container in the back of the machine and it just unscrews, you put the oil in, you measure it out, and then as long as the uh, car is under vacuum, you can inject the oil. So our next step would be charging it up. So the charge capacity on this car, since it's a, uh, an import vehicle, is 575 grams, okay? Now, you've seen everything up to this point is measured in pounds, okay? So I'm going to show y'all real quick, sorry, oops, zoomed in too far, how to change that to grams. So I'm gonna press charge. Okay, it's asking, is the service being performed on a system with an electric compressor using PoE oil? This is only going to apply if you have an electrically driven compressor in a hybrid or a plug-in vehicle. So uh, our Kia is just a standard conventional vehicle, so we are gonna press no or that, the red X. Okay, so it's going to check the inlet pressure, make sure that we don't have any pressure in the machine, make sure it's on the vacuum, ready to charge. Um, so now we are going to go to the service data and we'll press the green button here that we're not going to save the service data. It's gonna check the database, which we don't have, of course. Some of these have a plug-in database on them. Uh, so it's going to charge right here. You see here, charge is in pounds, okay? We don't want charge in pounds, uh, we want it in grams. So we're gonna press this button right here. We can go from pounds, we can go to ounces, or we can go to kilograms, okay? So kilograms is what we're wanting, and we're wanting to put in 575 grams, which is 0 0.575 kilograms, okay? So 0, 0, 0.0575 on the kilograms. Additional oil, this is where we would be injecting that three ounces of oil. I'm not going to do this because I'm going to be teaching students on this car and pulling it down and filling it up for the next couple of weeks. So I'm not gonna waste all that oil, but this is where you would put zero, three ounces of oil. Or you can change that to milliliters if you're working on an import car. And then you can also toggle if you're gonna charge on the high side or the low side, which we are gonna charge on the high side because the car's not on and we're not expecting to crank this vehicle up. Matter of fact, this vehicle right now does not even crank up. So we can charge on the high side as long as we're not running the air conditioning, okay? So pressing this will get us on the way. It's going to read the tank weight. Again, you need to be very careful not to um, disturb the machine when it's doing that. Now I'm gonna zoom out so you can see the gauges fill. And you'll start hearing the hissing noise that you normally hear, and you'll start seeing the gauges, the high and the low side, go up. You'll also notice that the, the charge uh, weight will be read out in the screen there. Let's see if I can zoom in. 
So charge in progress, charged. It's almost there. Pretty quick to charge this machine with this machine. So when it gets close, it's going to slow down so it doesn't overrun. And it'll just barely eke some in to where it can meet that 575 mark. Almost there. Okay, so now we're almost done with charging. Now we have to do something with the refrigerant that's left over in the hoses. So if this vehicle was able to crank, I would normally do the hose equalize. I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So we're going to press continue with hose equalize. We're going to disconnect the high side service hose, connect the low side hose. And of course, this is where we would crank the vehicle up and start the air conditioning and put it on max. Okay. So yeah, we got the car running. Now what it's going to do is going to equalize the high side and the low side. here. So it's going to equalize the hoses. Now, if this car was running, of course, the high side would be a lot higher than it is right now and the low side would be a lot lower. So this is going to allow the vehicle to pull in the refrigerant from the low side and the high side to make sure you have the full charge. If you don't do this, you will slightly undercharge the vehicle and I will slightly undercharge this one, but right now I just can't start this vehicle up because it has a couple of things apart on it because it's our, our training vehicle. So after the hoses equalize, it's going to tell you to turn off the vehicle. So it's going to say close coupler valves and disconnect service hoses from vehicle. So let me go ahead and take the low side off. Just like that. And we'll press this and the machine will recover the rest of the refrigerant that's left in it. So you'll see the gauges, they're going to drop to zero. That way, there's no refrigerant left in the gauges. The gauge is gonna hold a little bit of refrigerant. So we're gonna do a first stage recovery and then a second stage recovery, just like we did in the vehicle. The vehicle will, I mean, the machine will apply a light vacuum to the hoses to make sure that there's no refrigerant, no oil, no anything left. If you hear the vacuum pump just cut on. Purge the air out, that's what you're also hearing. And at that point we're done, it says amount charge refrigerant 0 0.575 kilograms. So pretty easy, it takes you about, depending on how long you're vacuuming or so, it takes you, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so to run this machine properly. Okay, hopefully you've learned something from this video on the Robin Air machine. Uh, if you can, please like and subscribe my video for more content. And if you have any questions, just put them down there in the comments and I'll get to them when I can. And thanks for watching. See you soon.